I'm Johnson Huang, I'm a skull-based ENT surgeon here, based here in Newcastle in Australia. Um, my appointment is to the John Hunter Hospital and John Hunter Children's Hospital. Uh, my subspecialty really is uh, skull-based and otology. However, um, I also uh, perform oncological uh, skull-based neck dissections, um, as well as uh, appointed as a paediatric uh, otology. Yeah, the first time I learned about piezo surgery was in 2015. Uh, it was at an endoscopic year uh, course, and um, during the live surgery, uh, I believe uh, they were using a piezo uh, to uh, perform the surgery, which I was very impressed um, at how rapidly they were able to expose the middle ear structure, removing the bone while preserving the uh, soft tissues and preserving the nerve. Since then, I've attended a few other courses and attended other conferences and been exposed to the Mectron uh, Piezo, um, where I um, uh, learned about this device and was able to use on cadavers. And um, we, in 2017, we acquired our first unit at uh, Hunter Valley Private, and um, I've been using it, learning how to adapt it to different types of surgery that I do, including uh, middle ear surgery, stepidectomy, and lateral temporal bone resections. The main reason for uh, using piezo is uh, for endoscopic ear cases. Um, traditionally, we would um, use a uh, uh, a drill, um, but the drill does have its drawbacks. With endoscopic ear surgery, uh, the piezo allows me to expose uh, structures while preserving the quarter tympani, preserving uh, the facial nerve, and I find that very, very useful. Uh, since then, I've um, adapted uh, using the piezo in terms of uh, stepidectomy, uh, again, exposing the structures I need to expose while um, preserving the curette. I find the piezo very useful because using the traditional curette, often we need um, such fine and controlled force. Um, and you know, in my hands, uh, even though I'm very careful, I st can still um, cause damage to the quarter tympani. Um, other procedure that I use piezo for includes uh, lateral temporal bone. Um, while I do m most of the dissection with the traditional drill, I find with the piezo I'm able to make the final cuts um, close to vital structure um, and the piezo makes it much safer to do those cuts as well. In addition, you know, I do do uh, maxillectomies and mandibulectomies and that's where the piezo shines in terms of uh, its use. Uh, for lateral temporal bone, it will be traditional drill with maxillectomy, mandibulectomy. We traditionally will use um, oscillating saw or with, uh, or, or with osteotomes. Um, in terms of uh, uh, stapedectomies, we traditionally use um, the curette, which um, again, even though we can be careful, the cordial tympani can be damaged. Um, lastly, with endoscopic ear surgery, uh, traditionally, it will we would, we would have to convert to a microscope to drill um, with a traditional drill or to drill endoscopically, but that takes a long time, creates a lot of bone dust, um, and is quite slow in terms of changing equipment, changing instrument, and irrigating of the field. With the piezo, I'm able to now um, do less, uh, less invasive surgery. So uh, traditionally, rather than combine approach microscopic ear surgery, we're now doing a lot more endoscopic ear surgery. In terms of the lateral temporal bone resection, that's where I find it most useful. Um, the, the fine cuts that we make uh, onto a temporal mandibular joint um, around the facial nerve and then quite close to the internal carotid artery. These are the vital structures that we can preserve uh, while shortening the operating time. And so that's one of the main uh, advantage of the piezo. Um, in terms of mandibulectomy or maxillectomies, uh, de definitely using the piezo, it, um, it causes less burn to the bone um, while making precise cuts.